By all means, go ahead. All right. Um, so, Mr. Chalk, how did you first hear about Beast Wars? How did I first hear about it? Well, um, let me see. I, um, I had heard of Transformers because I used to do uh, Transformers commercials back in the day with Transformers Generation 2, uh, just the, uh, the toy line. And I had been doing cartoons, uh, a different kind, G.I. Joe and things like that. And then my agent called me one day and, and he said, hey, they got this new show. It's called, it's called uh, uh, Beast Wars. And I said, okay, cool. I didn't have had no idea it was Transformers. I just said, oh, okay, sure. And uh, I went in and read for several characters, uh, most notably Megatron and Optimus Prime. And um, it got winnowed down at different, different um different audition sessions, call back, call back, narrowing it down, narrowing it down. And finally they said, okay, uh, you'll be Megatron. The, 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 the choice was I was going to be Megatron and David K was going to be Optimus Prime. Well, and then they decided to switch it around and I became Optimus Primal and David became Megatron. So I thought that was kind of cool, but still it was a, another cartoon. I've been doing a lot of cartoons at that time and I had no idea. And we started recording them and then they showed us our first uh, version of the, uh, of the show itself, which is like a, the first CGI cartoon on, te on television. And we just went, holy moly, this is an amazing show. We were flipped out about it. And uh, I thought, well, that's cool. This should, this should do well. And uh, I didn't think anything of it until one day I got a call saying, would you come down to Los Angeles for a uh, convention, a cartoon convention? And they brought four of us down. And uh, I said, sure, okay. So um, I sh showed up at this convention. And uh, we all went on stage and the crowd went absolutely insane. <laughs> so. I thought this was pretty amazing. And oh. I never realized it was such a big deal. If and I had, I'd probably have been a lot more nervous doing the auditions. <laughs> Did you ever consider emulating Peter during the recording process? Did I ever consider it? Emulating Peter Cullen. Uh, Peter Cullen? No, because uh, at the time, and thank God, at the time I had no idea who Peter Cullen was. And I had no idea about Transformers Generation 1 because, you know, when, when that came out, I was 30 years old. I wasn't really, a, I didn't really watch cartoons. I, I never, I, I grew up with Huckleberry Hound and, and uh, Quick Draw McGraw and the Pink Panther and things like that. So um, the, new, the new generation of cartoons was a bit, beyond me so i didn't uh, i didn't really watch them and um so i came up with what i thought would be uh, a, a good voice for this character and uh, you know that he's a machine but he's also warm-blooded and, and has compassion and all these different things and that's what i played if i would have if i would have gone the peter cullen route i would have changed my voice to be like peter cullen and that would not work for Optimus Prime at all. Yeah, um, I know in the recent War for Cybertron trilogy cartoon, which we'll talk about later, uh, Jake Fuji emulated Colin, and people, everyone, including Colin himself, hated it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the middle of an interview. Uh, excuse me, for one second. Sure, no problem. I, I really am. I'm in the middle of an interview. Sorry. Uh, here, do you want to take this, darling? Might as well hook it up. I was just showing. Yeah, you can show them. You can hook everything up according to, well, grab the cable, see which one's fit. There. <sighs> I just got, oh, here, you might as well take the, uh, the, the tray to hold it up to. Uh, I just got a... Um, 
a new thing, basically for my wife and for me too. Um, it's called the Aerocaster. Oh, it's for it's to do like um, podcasts, right? Yeah, but you can do four cameras at the same time. And they're all hooked up wirelessly via your phone or your iPad. And uh, so I've got, you know, stands for the for the phones. And um, I've got um, this 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 thing. And it's really cool because you can switch back and forth between cameras and add effects and, and add graphics and whatnot from from whatever you have in your library and your uh, in your computer that's online and you can just you know get access and then you can broadcast live out to youtube or out to uh, facebook or twitch or any of those uh things so it's pretty interesting um marketing tool and uh, because my wife is running for mayor next year i thought it would be a good idea to to uh get this and uh, i'm glad i'm glad i got it now because i ordered it like three and a half months ago I'm going to tell my cousin who lives out of Vancouver to vote for your wife. Actually, I'm going to tell her. 308. Hang on one second. 308, 144. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. I'm going to tell my cousin. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell my cousin and her family who lives in Vancouver to vote for your wife next year. Oh, thank you. Yes, because she's going to be a damn fine mayor. She's I agree. In the middle of, uh, she's in the middle of doing some some stuff right now and so i'm just showing her this uh this um damn it i'm sorry just it's give me okay. one second okay media guy our media guy is um is um looking at it to see how we can use it as a as a marketing tool for her and a campaign tool i think your wife will be a great mayor um, well thank you uh, I think so too. <laughs> so but there you back, go. Yeah, sorry. Uh, going back, how did you respond to the fan reaction of truck not monkey? Did it ever bother you? Sorry for the uh, for that impression. I, I was just trying truck to not monkey. <laughs> I was just I, trying to I, sell it to fanboys. Oh yeah, truck not monkey. Monkey. Here's the the stand. Uh, uh, and you can use. Uh, Oh, and here, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, darling. This is really the wrong time. Thank you. Anyway, okay. Um, I, I have no, I have no, uh, no uh, real animosity or any, any feelings about truck versus monkey. I mean, I've played them both and both have their assets and both have their, you know, their drawbacks, but I really love playing primal. Primal was just the greatest character. He had lots of uh, depth, and he had lots of uh, lots of shadings that I really liked as an actor. And I really liked the truck because the truck was all bombast and go. Let's blow them up. Oh, Transformers roll out, combine. You know, doing all that stuff, and that was cool too. Yeah, uh, yeah I remember when I was rewatching Transformers Cybertron. I got all, I got super excited when Optimus Prime said, "Optimus Prime." Savage claw mode. Savage claw mode. Yes, <laughs> I remember it. You know, the right. air mode combined. Something else combined. Oh, I remember all those things. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, but uh, when I think about it, I uh, I quite liked doing that whole trilogy thing. I mean, I, the, the the only thing I didn't like about it is because it was uh, dubbing. Yeah. And you have to fill in the gaps, and uh, that presented a challenge of sorts sometimes. And uh, I, I've I've always liked to take the time to create my own performance uh, without a time or you know a flap restraint. And um, because uh, because of that, you know, they, you you have to fit a certain performance into a certain time time frame rather than taking your dramatic pauses and beats and whatnot, or even ad libs like a laugh or something like that. So yeah, everything has to be exact. And that's great. And that's another challenge in itself. It was a lot of fun. 
but I much prefer um, creating my own character. Okay, um, so we all know that the Transformers franchise at its core is sell toys. Um, since the, um, the show is fully CG, they sacrificed um, a huge cast for more personality, but at the same time, um, they also had to kill off characters such as Tigatron, Air Razor, Scorponok, Pterosaur, and Dino, and obviously the fan favorite Dinobot to make room for new characters like uh, Silverbolt, Quick Strike, uh, Depth Charge, and the Transmetal upgrades. Like, um, the did you think that fans would be would have a negative reaction towards this different approach to Transformers, or do you think that fans would have preferred um just bit, a huge cast of robots uh, fighting each other? Well, I, it's, there's two ways to look at it. Uh, from a collector's point of view, having new toys is always a boon, right? Having new 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 toys to play with, yeah, there you go, okay. Having new toys is always a boon. Uh, from a creative uh, from a creative standpoint, it it just seems to me that um, it just seems to me that uh, you know some people really really like those voices that we did. And the characters are all distinct. Like I watched, um, I watched the Transformers Prime. I think that was the one, the 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 one before this new one. And the the voices I thought were okay, but I couldn't tell the difference between one voice and the other. They all sounded kind of the same and very slow. But the graphics and the the animation was amazing. It was just wonderful stuff. But the uh, the voicing in it, I thought, was just not up to snuff. Yeah. In my, that's my opinion. I, that's, uh, you know, it's not to say that those guys weren't good. It's just that they weren't, they didn't have the, the, the distinct uh, differences that guys like, like you can always tell when Scott McNeil is doing a voice. You can always tell when Pterosaur is there or when, when, uh, when uh, Rhinox was there, you always knew who Rhinox was. And you always knew who Cheetor was and all the other characters. You knew who they were. And, and Tigatron, too. But now, when you listen to the voices, they all kind of sound the same. Uh, fun fact, Rhinox is actually my favorite character from Beast Wars. I really love the whole genius uh, bruiser um, type and he's a lovely guy too in real life. The, the the guy Richard. Yeah. Um. Didn't he voice Vector Prime too in Cybertron? Um. Yeah. His death actually, his death in Cybertron made me cry. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. This happened very recently. Um. When Vector Prime sacrificed himself. Um. To let yeah. the Autobots escape Gigantion. Um. It was just really sad for me and. I don't uh, usually cry when I'm watching movies. I feel sad, but Vector Prime. Oh, that was a crusher. But uh, Richard is uh, just a, a lovely, lovely, lovely guy. Uh, I, I, I did, a, I actually, him and I did a little Christmas parody together. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's on, on my channel or on uh, with Candace Santora, we did, it was the night before Christmas. And uh, Rhinox and I did uh, did the story of Twas the Night Before Christmas adapted to the uh, the ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very good. I'm, I'll definitely look uh, into that. So, oh yeah, it's really fun. Aside from Waspinator, were there any characters that Hasbro wanted to kill off? Like were Rat Trap, Cheetor, uh, Rhinox, Inferno, or Black Arachnia ever considered killable? At any point. No, never. They, so it was they, really, love, them. So they it was, love them. So it was really just Waspinator before the creators said, don't kill Waspinator, kill Pterosaur, yeah. along with Scorponok. Well, Pterosaur, Pterosaur and Scorponok both disappeared. True. Um, I think there was one shot where we saw that they were about to... Um, we already saw them with a glowing aura as they disappeared into the lava. Yeah, that was uh, 
that was uh, Doug. Doug, uh, what's the last of his name? Doug Parker. Doug Parker. Doug Parker and uh, Don Brown, I think, were the it was Corpenock. Yeah. Yeah, and they both they just both uh, faded away. I don't know why that happened, but they did. But all the rest of them stayed all the way through, and we grant we gained a few new characters like like Tigatron and like uh, Air Razor, and um, Depth Charge. Depth Charge, yeah. Silver yeah, Bolt. I'm, uh, silver Bolt. I love Silver Bolt. I'll save you. <laughs> that that yeah, sounded a, almost like Scott McNeil. Yeah, he's a great character. Hmm. So El Razor. No, who did he have the love affair with? Oh, Black Arachnian. Yes. <laughs> Although it felt kind of weird hearing um, Scott McNeil arguing with Scott McNeil, talking to Scott McNeil um, during like most of the episodes. Oh, yeah. Well, because he was the uh, rat trap. We're all gonna die. Yeah, he was rat trap and the waspinator and silver bolt. And, and I think that's Dino. Oh, and Dino. Dino Bot. Of course, he was Dino Bot. I remember those characters. That was yeah. amazing. Thank you so, so much. So fun. I haven't seen Scotty for quite a while. I know he's in town somewhere, but I never get to see him because, uh, well, COVID sure paid a part in that. One day, um, I hope um, you guys can do a huge Beast Wars reunion in person someday. Well, this is what I'm hoping, too, because we did do a sort of a reunion. Well, no, not, not even that. We had a the last time we had a reunion was it was a reboot reunion, and that was back in 2010, around there, where we had a, a bunch of the cast were also from from uh, from uh, Beast Wars, but uh, most of them I don't know where they are. I mean, Jimmy Jimmy Burns I see every once in a while, and Richard I see. Um, uh, Doug Parker, I haven't seen forever. Venus Terzo and I were in Baltimore in November, in October, doing a, a convention in Baltimore. But uh, most of us, you know, because even with their, you know, we, we work together, but we don't work together because right now, because of COVID, we're only allowed to, like, I'm doing another series right now, and uh, I'm only allowed to go into the studio by myself record all my stuff by myself and then everybody you know it's all solitary recording you know there's no uh yeah there's no ensemble cast recording now covid protocols it just screwed everything up mm -hmm. now it's getting even worse so yeah um right now there's a sixth wave here in quebec and um a lot of my coworkers at work called in sex. Some of them was not for COVID, but we all got to be careful. Where are you now? I'm in Montreal. Oh, you live in Montreal? Yep. Go house, oh. go. Huh? I was born in Vancouver. You were born in Vancouver? Yes. Yeah, but you moved to Montreal. Yeah, I used to work in Montreal. I used to work in a television station called CFCF. On, I've uh, never heard of it. Uh, it's Boulevard Jean Talon in Montreal. I'll yeah, I did a show there many years ago called uh, Snow Job. I'll go uh, check it out uh, when I start my acting classes. But um, if we can get back to the uh, topic, sorry. Uh, yeah. When it came time to sh um, show recording of G1 Megatron, I heard that Frank Welker was not available, so they brought you in. Did you audition for the role, or um, did the developers thought it would be a nice uh, tongue-in-cheek reference to your initial audition? You know, I've got to tell you honestly, I do not remember doing the part, but I'm sure I did it. I just don't remember doing it, and um, and that's probably because I'm old. But 
I, I that, that was in G1. That was back in 1982. No, no, no. It was um in during Beast Wars when Meg when Predacon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did that. That was yeah. That's right. Okay, in Beast Wars. Yeah, not in G1. No. How did that was fun? How did that happen? Um, was it like some kind of development gag that the creators threw in because Frank Walker was unavailable? Or did you have to audition for it? No, I just, I just threw it in. I think that I think we had an in-room audition. If I'm not mistaken. And were you aware that the fans were not thrilled with your impression? Because that's what I read. Well, I I really was unaware. But if they were if they were unimpressed with my rendition, then I say sorry. <laughs> Not perfect. I try my best, you know. Uh, I as my old saying goes, "Be yourself. You can't be anyone else's," you know. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, I had no idea that. Uh, but uh, I had no idea who Frank Welker was back in that day. And uh, I only learned, you know, as I started getting more and more into animation, that uh, who these characters were, who the animation gods were. And Frank Welker was one of them. Oops. <laughs> and uh, when it came time for Primal's death, were you aware that they were going to bring him back? Or was like Optimus Prime's death um, that where it was supposedly meant to be permanent? And has only brought him back because of fan outcry. I, at the time when I got killed, I had a reasonable explanation. Did it? Did it work for you? Uh, no, I couldn't get this uh, plug in. We'll deal with that I'll later. get it. I'll get it for you. It takes two seconds. Um, I'll get it. Um, I, I, I had no idea that I was going to be killed. I, when I saw that I died, I thought, oh, no, they'll bring me back. Maybe, maybe, won't they? I hope so. I'll be really pissed if they don't. But uh, uh, I had no idea if I was going to come back or not. But at that time, you know, I was I was so incredibly busy. I was working every single day on on something, and uh, it was uh, it was something I really didn't allow myself time to dwell over or think about. I just. I thought that, yeah, I'll come back. I'll come back. They have to come back. I'm the lead guy in the show. You can't kill off the lead guy in the show. <laughs> well, maybe you can. Except Hasbro did in 1986 with Prime, and they only brought him back because uh, kids were not happy with that with the death scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, people, it's like I was really upset when they changed the voice of Barney Rubble and the Flintstones. I don't know if you remember that, if you've ever watched the Flintstones. Yeah, I, but, when you said Barney Rubble, for some, I thought of Barney Gumble. I'm like, wait, Flintstones now? Oh, Barney, Ru Barney Rubble, uh, Fred's best friend. Fred's Rubble best friend. In the Simpsons. Yeah, he, uh, Barney Rubble, uh, uh, for, I don't know who was voicing him. I thought that uh, was um, was Mel Blanc who was voicing him. I'm not sure, somebody. But then one day I'm I'm watching the show, the new season, and his voice changed. He was no longer Barney Rubble. He was somebody else playing Barney Rubble. I went, what happened to Barney Rubble? What happened to his voice? It's gone. And it just happened, I think, in season three or something or season two. But his uh, he was no the the voice of Barney Rubble was no longer Barney Rubble. So yeah, I can understand people getting upset. I get up, I get upset like. Well, I'm not upset. I think, you know, Ron Froman is playing me or playing my part in the new uh, Transformers. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Um, fans are not happy with uh, Ron Froman voice replacing you as Optimus Primal. And I know you, get, uh, you gave him your approval, but how do you, like, what do you think fans should expect um, with uh, Ron Perlman voicing him? I think they should expect the same kind of warmth, the same kind of uh, emotional depth that, uh, well, to me, that I gave the character. Um, I'm hoping that he brings the humanity to the character like I brought to the character. 
um, because his his uh, his you know I like I like Ron. I you know I played golf with him and talked to him a few times. He's a very nice fellow, and uh, he was good on the on on Prime. I well I'm, I don't know if you not not on Prime. I can't remember what Transformers he it was played on where Power he played of the Primes. Power of the Primes, and I thought that he was. Yeah, I got to be honest. I thought it was a little bit flat, but that's just me. But oh, um, I thought he was flat too. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was just a little bit flat. But then when he's doing Prime, I'm just hoping that he, you know, he honors the character by making him a good character. And that's what, you know, that's what I did with my Optimus. I, I mean, I was not, I was not, uh, uh, Peter Cullen and I was not any of the other guys, but I wanted to be, I wanted it to be the best that it could be. And that's, I'm just hoping that, that he makes that character the best that it can be. I mean, I have no hard feelings. I mean, Hasbro didn't even give me a call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I first um, read that Ron Perlman was voicing off this, I'm like, Oh, Ron Perlman, that's cool. But keep in mind, I didn't. Besides Transformers Cybertron, I didn't uh, watch any Transformers cartoons um, until like last year because I was so hell bent on sting on sticking with the Michael Bay films. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh <laughs> she, boy. Yeah, but um, then when I read, wait, Ron Perlman replaced Gary Chalk, and I, when I read that, I just started, I just hit myself in the face because I feel so ashamed for approving of. Ron Perlman's casting. Yeah, I, uh, I just don't, I just don't know um, how it's going to turn out. I mean, personally, at my age, I, I, I really don't care if he, if he, uh, if he has the voice job. All I care about is that he did, does a good job. If he does a good job, I'm happy. If he doesn't, I'll be really pissed. <laughs> Speaking of a bad job, Justin Pierce replaced you as Primal on the War for Cybertron trilogy. And I think everyone can agree that nobody liked the voice acting in that show. I yeah. mean, he was not as rough. He was too rough. And it was similar to Jake Fousey's take on Optimus. And But if I'm going to be honest, I liked his take more than uh, Marcus Bo, Bo... I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Boba Zick's, uh take on Predacon Megatron where they yeah. turned that guy into a complete simp. Yeah, I know. I just are, you, are, makes are, no are, sense. Yeah, um, you said that the voice acting was low energy. Um, what what was your complete honest thought on the whole voice acting situation in the War for Cybertron trilogy where they hired non-unionized voice actors and hired someone to just emulate the original voice actor well i thought you know to my uh biggest uh beef was that um the direction was not that great because there was there were holes between the lines you could drive a truck through you know there was like there was like they just they all tried to sound exactly the same. Come on, Tiger. Come on, Nick. <coughs> all the, I can't remember all the new Convoy and all these. I just can't remember all the voices. But they all tried to sound like this. And it just didn't make any sense, you know? Yeah, and then there's this like, we are not like the Decepticons. I know. It so just, many awkward pauses. Yeah, and, and and that to, to me was the fault of the director, and not the actors, because they, because the actors they're doing what they think is right. But the thing is, when you have different characters, you have to have separation between the characters. You cannot have, and in animation, it's really important to have signature signature voices for those characters, because people watch, and that's the thing that they love. Is they love those the voices, and they love the characters. Like, what would uh, what would that you know that little guy or the the little sloth uh the three-toed sloth on sid. ice age uh sid imagine sid going like this hi how are you what do you want to do um can i come and stay with you guys you know what if he was like boring and flat like that what would happen 
You know, you go, oh, that's no fun. But Sid is hilarious. We, I love listening to him. And then when you get to the, the voices here, the ironically, I feel like the only one who doesn't a sound flat is Predacon Megatron. But I'm pretty sure when David Tate heard that voice, he must have been <laughs> laughing his ass off. Yeah, he was. Because it's the same thing, you know, he's going... Because, you know, David K was, yes, Saigons, let's do this now. So, Optimus Prime. You know, he had this wonderful voice. <clears throat> he still had a wonderful voice. So I talk to him every once in a while on the phone and on like this on uh, Facebook and see how he's doing because he lives in Los Angeles now. So, but um, yeah, it's it's very important to have a, 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 to have a, distinctive voices i mean not not distinctive like cartoony but you know we're going to be able to tell the difference between one character and the other and, and not, not have the leader of the of the predacons sound like a little fanboy crying fanboying over his namesake <laughs> it's it's Whoa, they just it, uh, you're injured let me help you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. But, you know, it's, it, it shows to me a, dis, a, a, disturbing, a disturbing amount of cynicism on the part of the manufacturers who think, you know, we, we, we think these voices are okay. We think they're good. Um, and we have new toys to sell. But we don't want to spend any money on union people. We just, you know, I, 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 I really don't understand the logic behind it. But, but uh, you know, I'm sure after they see this interview, they'll never hire me again. <laughs> yeah, uh, when Peter Cullen inevitably retires, um, I want you to take on um, his role. You or well, David K. Yeah, K is great. I mean, it's it's I'm, I I have a good time. I'm, I, I'm you know I'm I've had an incredible career and uh, I'm still going and I'm still having fun. So as long as I have fun, that's all I care about. And uh, I love it. I love uh, you know mixing it up with the fans and having a lot of fun times with the fans and. That's why I love conventions. I miss conventions so much. I had such a blast when I went to Baltimore. It was so fun. Yeah. But, um, to me, it's all about having fun with voice acting. Um, I personally can do a very good impression of Venom! Eddie, you are a loser! But we must work together to say that. But first, I'm hungry. Can I have some words? <laughs> does, does hurt the throat, though. Oh, you got... Uh, <laughs> You like uh, uh, what's his face? Um, Tom Hardy. Huh? Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. Tom Hardy. Oh yeah. And he plays. Who does he play? He plays somebody. He, play, he plays Venom. Venom. That's right. Yeah. That Venom. Was, that was my take on Venom. Yeah. Well. And my friends have said that the voice sounds a lot like Tom Hardy, even with, um, even when he's applying the voice filter. Yeah. And that's what he does. He has a, that's the filter voice. I've My never heard that. The door is not the voice. Us. Us. A, uh, yes. I will destroy you. Yes. <laughs> so much fun. Anyway, next. When it so came to, to get, yeah. Uh, when it came to Beast Machines, I'm sorry for talking about Beast Machines. Uh, Why? I love Beast Machines. Really? Because um, I read on IMDb. That aside from David K, um, he, uh, mo most of the cast didn't like of uh, recording their lines on Beast Machines, and I, and it says that even um, that you, I think I want to say you ranted in between recording sessions about the characterization of Optimus and how. Oh yeah, but that was good. that was on the last season, the second last season. Because he turned into a navel gazer, he just he became so esoteric, and you know, it's just like 
he was like uh he was more meditative he was no longer he was no longer interested in conflict no longer interested in fighting off the uh the the uh predacons he was sort of looking at his navel and gazing on the meaning of life and all that and i thought is this what we're about and because I, I found it to be kind of i don't know it was just but the the writing picked up in the in the last season they started to get back to what we were about in the last mm -hmm. season oh uh, yeah because i the thing is i wasn't gonna watch beast machines but then i got so attached to the beast wars characters after watching the first season that i said oh screw it i'll i'll give it a try and yeah i didn't like it i mean aside from jet storm i didn't like how the characterization for all these characters were way off. And like you said, Optimus Prime becoming a, a religious zealot and Rhinox turning into, um, a, keeping, turning into a, um, a bad guy. It was, it was just, an, and it was too dark for a children's cartoon. And this is coming from a guy who actually yeah. enjoys the darker aspects of the Michael Bay films. Yeah, Michael Bay. <laughs> So when the time came to do the Unicron trilogy, do you have to audition for the role of Optimus in between each installment? Because I am aware no. that because I, I know some characters did swap voice actors in between trilogies, like Hotshot switch from Brett Miller to Kirby Morrow. There was also Jetfire going from Scott to uh, what was his name Brian Dremont. Oh, Drummond. Yeah, oh, Brian Drummond. Drummond. Yeah. Oh, that's because of availability, too. So, and, well, oh, I love Kirby. Kirby passed away last year. Yeah, it's very sad. Oh, terrible. Because I had just, I had literally just seen him a few days beforehand. I give him a ride from the airport to home. <laughs> and uh, I love them in class with Titans. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, that was a that was mine too, wasn't it? I did that one as well. Yeah, didn't you voice Ares? I heard Hercules. You voiced and Ares. Ares and Ares. I believe it was Ares and Hercules. I guess. Yeah, it was Ares. I remember it. Oh yeah, the war guy. And uh, did you ever voice read any of the? Uh, translated original scripts from the for any of the Unicron trilogy episodes, and or did you read the the new dub script with all the changes? I just read the dub script. I couldn't read the original script because it was in Japanese. Okay, um, so uh, so now as we reflect on the 25th anniversary of Beast Wars, did you ever think the series would become a fan favorite, especially with the whole truck no monkey controversy at the dawn of the series and honestly who would have, th would have thought that dinobot would become the series breakout character oh uh, i know don't I, I, in answer to your question i i honestly had no idea how the show was going to be responded to uh i knew that we had a good show and i knew that our character the characters were great and the relationships between the characters were great. And this is what it's all about when you get right down to it, it's the relationships between the characters. And uh, they were all, um, they were all uh, relatable. The char every character in that show was relatable to somebody. And like, you know, Dinobot was a tragic, a tragic villain, a tragic hero or a villain who became a hero, but he was a creature of honor and loyalty, which was, uh, uh, admirable but he was also on the wrong side <laughs> but then he eventually you know turned around and um uh optimus was a leader with who had the trials and tribulations of basically like a dad dealing with kids you know with uh like with cheetor and uh, and rat trap and um i i never really thought about how it would turn out but that it became a huge hit was uh was a a real a, a real pleasure to see because it was just such a wonderful show and and I know there were the guys the purists who go Gen One trucks Gen One trucks and all this and 
but there were a lot of people and from you know i've talked to people all over the world and there was a lot of people who who absolutely uh lived by that got them through their childhood through that and um it was a it was a it was a wonderful gift yeah um thanks to you and my uncle um i was able to get through um my child my personal childhood because i would always ask myself what would optimus prime do <laughs> and then when i finally decided to watch beast wars i spread wait gary chuck is optimus prime. I'm like oh screw that i'm watching that immediately there's going to be yeah. some sense of familiarity for me in there yeah that was a good show and given the poor reception of beast machines up until like i think it was energon that people um saw beast machines in a better light do you think fans would be more keen on a new adaptation um whether it be as a sequel to rise of the beast or as an animated adaptation i think they would i think they would with given today's technology and given uh given the history of the show and given the um uh, the, the advances that they've made if they get the right cast and the right the the right uh, combination of voice actors that show could be a huge hit and um do you think the toys would sell because i still remember i read that because this is before i was born um i know i saw that a lot of the toys were inaccurate were inaccurate and some of the yeah. songs were just I, I won't say weird but it's they were a bit wrong yeah they were not there. I I I kind of like the um, the trans metals. The trans metals were kind of cool. The original uh, Beast Wars toy line was pretty amazing. I, I thought, um, and I still have people who you know who, who have me <laughs> sign these things and and they still collect them. Uh, some of the later toys, I don't know. They 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 had nothing to do. Some of the show toys had nothing to do with the show, but they were just there. You know, like the bat, you know, is the character who's, a, I think it was Megatron, who was a bat. Remember? Yeah, Megatron was. What the hell is that? There was also the sound wave who, trans, who, who had two beast modes, a crocodile and a bat. Yeah. That was weird. Like, wh what is your take on this, on how we're just reusing these random names of these names of characters and slapping them on completely unrelated characters. Um, I know Inferno worked um, for yeah. the for the character, but to the, the royalty for the royalty. Uh, but for the royalty, also, yes. There was also Energon Ironhide, uh, Armada Wheeljack, because ironically enough, we would end up getting a character who looked exactly like G One Wheeljack. Um, but he was renamed uh, into a different character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, I, I guess you're limited in, in you know, in the number of vehicles that you can convert into robots. You know, and you have to start getting weirder and weirder, or else you start doing the uh, version 2.0 or version 3.0. You know, you know, it's the same character with a different name. Uh, yeah. Um... I know some fans really like these new in-name only characters. Uh, I, for once, love the Bayverse Ratchet. This is over the original G1 Ratchet. This is the yeah. uh, my masterpiece movie version. And there's also the most prominent example, which was actually, I do have them here, Barricade, where um, the Bayverse character was so popular that um, Hasbro renamed the G1 version in, into Runner and created a uh, G1 version of this movie character. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's this, cool. This is also, I, love the, I love how they put together, that's for sure. Yeah, this is also the movie masterpiece version. These are very... Oh, small. you got the masterpiece. I, I have a masterpiece yeah. version of me somewhere, somewhere. I have the kingdom version of you oh yeah yeah um because i just started adding because beast wars has the honor of being the first series of uh of the first non-bayverse universe 
where I um where I started collecting the characters because back then uh -huh. I was strictly non I strictly all Bayverse because and by the time I had really gone to Transformers, um, they moved away from the uh, from Cybertron and in, into the movies. Yeah, yeah. And as a kid who I who grew up in the early two thousands, um, it was a time when a lot of us did not have a way to access the G one series, um, and before the live action, before the live action movies came out. So our knowledge of Transformers came from airings of the Unicron trilogy on TV screens during Saturday morning cartoons. And this was also at a time where we did not think Peter Cullen would be reprising his role. So aside from Transformers animated, did you ever think of yourself as Optimus, as the Optimus Prime for a new generation of fans? Well, knowing what I know now, I would say yes. That's what I would say. Yes, I would. A new generation, of course. Um, yes, no, I would. Uh, that would be that would be my my. Uh... Yeah. Uh, um, a lot of us are really grateful um, to have you be our Optimus Prime. Um, recently, my friend Chris, we talked about uh, Tiger. We talked about your performance in Beast Wars, and he said, "Oh, I remember." Tiger Tron, I remember Optimus Primal. Yeah, uh, Gary Chalk, he loved you as Primal. Yeah. And so I'm going to share my screen now because I want your opinion on this. Because uh, we got leaked images of Optimus Primal's design for the movies. Yeah. And also, we also got uh, leaked images of Tiger Tron for the for, for a Tigertron toy in the movie. I'm not sure if he will appear, but um, I'd like to get your opinion. Um, just... Okay. So we're on tformers.com and this is the Optimus Prime, this is Primal's design. Uh, what do you think? And what do you think of this design and how it compares to his um, Beast Wars model. Well, I think this this is an amazing design. It's more, it's a, as I say, it's more truck than monkey, but it's, it sort of reminds me of the transmetal design. Ooh, um, but I don't think this uh, monkey the, will it, transform into a truck. No, this will transform back into a monkey. I can see the chest plates and uh, the arms and whatnot. But um, this is a, it's actually a beautiful design. I think it's a gorgeous design compared to what mine was first. This one, eh, this one, eh, not too bad. I mean, the face is a bit creepy. It is. I'm, I'm, I just can't look at the face. Yeah. I hope, no, it just looks. Uh, I hope this isn't the final design for the movie. And then here's I hope Tigatron. so too. But um, the, the Tigatron, I want to show you this. What is your thought on Tigatron supposedly becoming a weaponizer for Primal here? I think that's just weird. That's just weird. Or as, I, as you would say, well, that's just prime. Well, well, that's just weird. No, that's just prime. Using Tigatron as a weapon. Tigatron is a sentient being, not a thing. He's more in tune with his beast mode than his robot mode. That's exactly right. I really hope this is just concept art. And if Tigatron appears in the movie... He doesn't appear like a crossbow. Like that. <laughs> I think Blue Man Kuma would have hated the design. Oh, no kidding. And if he had all the money in the world, um, I think he would he would have purchased every single copy for before its release and then 
burn them all. Burnt it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so much for throwing that. I'm so relieved that I get to tell people you don't like the uh, Tiger Claw design. No, that uh, I just said. So why would you use the Tiger Tron as a weapon? He's not a thing. No, he He's was a, never a thing. And this is from, this is an era where the uh, robots looked look a lot closer to their cartoon counterparts compared to um, the Vingers. Where they looked more like aliens than robots. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of Blue Man Kuma, did you know that he also ended up voicing another white tiger mentor in a show? Mentor, called, yeah. In in a show called Chaotic. Yeah. He voiced a Vidov, and when I found out, I just, I I was so. I had I couldn't believe it. I'm like Blue, that's Blue Man Kuma. Yeah, I saw this must have been a Beast Wars fan. Well, you know, did you know that I that that Blue Man Kuma and myself have been friends for about forty years. Whoa! I first, you know, where I first met Blue Man Kuma. Where? In 1967, 1967, um, Blue was in an R&B band called King Blue in the Epics. And he came to our high school for the monthly, what they called the soul dance, where they had all these R&B bands that once a month would come and do a big dance at our high school. And I always remember him up on stage in his powder blue safari suit singing i can't turn you loose now and doing all these great r&b r&b epic songs back in the day in 1967 that was when i first met blue man kuma and then we actually worked together mm. uh doing car doing some cartoons but we had worked together doing films before that and so yeah so we we've known each other about 40 years yeah Damn. Amazing, hey? Yeah. He's such a soul tiger. Oh, he's just a lovely, lovely man. And just um he's got some, you know, you know, he has his health issues, but he's just been a great, great guy for and his son Kusei is also doing does cartoons as well. I would love um I one day I I really hope I can meet Blue Mankuma too. Um just I want to meet all of you guys and thank you all for um, giving all a huge, a new generation of fans this childhood. Yeah, well, thank you. No, it's, thank you for being there because without you, where are we? <laughs> and um, I gotta ask when it came down to killing Dinobot in Code of the Hero, it, uh, people love this episode. They said it's like the best episode in Transformers history. But during yeah. the process Every, everyone was laughing at Scott McNeil during his Shakespeare or monologue what exactly happened behind the scenes nothing it was great it was a very moving scene that scene that he did because I think I read that you threw that I don't know you were th um, throwing paper balls and everyone was laughing at that scene. oh no not not at that scene the um, because Scotty would sometimes fall asleep in the studio while we were recording because he would you know he had have like like a gap where he's not working, and so <laughs> we used to throw paper balls at him. and they would we would have paper fights, paper ball fights like snowball fights in the studio. And then uh, the other thing that we used to do that was that was that the studio got pissed off at us about is we used to make paper airplanes out of the scripts after we finished reading the page and we take it and make paper airplanes and fly them around the studio. <laughs> oh man, we were bad boys, but it was a fun recording process. Oh, we had so much fun. There was so much laughter in that studio. I do miss those days. We had 
just there are uh, there are some recordings of uh, on YouTube of us, you know, behind the scenes in the studio. Uh, I don't know where it is. Well, I remember when we were, I was doing Conan. There's there's recordings of uh, behind the scenes of when we were recording Conan in the studio. Yeah, it was fun. And um, my uh, last. Well, I have three last questions. Um, so, you also voiced Soundwave in for one episode in uh, Cybertron. Uh, how did you and some other voice actors stepped up to the role afterwards? But how did you get to voice Soundwave for that one episode? Uh, the a person who was supposed to do it was not there. Oh, uh, not available. Same thing for uh, why. Trevor Duvall voiced um, Megatron for one episode. Yeah. Um, also, have you met Peter Cullen? Oh yeah, several times. Uh, we had a we had a transformer off one time in Dallas, Texas, or Houston. No, Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Ooh. There was me, Neil Kaplan, uh, me, Neil Kaplan, and um, and Peter Cullen. Uh, how did what exactly happened at that Transformers off? Was well, it? we're just we're just playing various Transformer, you know, doing various uh, primal primal lines and primal scripts and and uh, doing the lines. So we had a Transformer off. It was quite fun. That I would have loved to see that. Yeah, that was in uh, that was in in Dallas, Texas. That was a few years ago now. I guess that'd be about crumbs almost 10 years ago. Maybe more. I don't know. No, it might be. No, it was more than that. Was it? I don't know. About 10 years ago, I guess. Yeah. I can't remember exactly when it was. It was a while ago, though. It's okay. Um, and my final question before I stop the recording, what was your initial reaction when you heard that David K was voicing Optimus Prime in Transformers Animated. Uh, I saw a YouTube video uh, from TFCon where a fan posed that question, and you were just sitting right next to him, and you just chortled. I just what? You just chortled. You just, um, you were calm, and then when that fan posed that question, it's, it looked like um, you were um, choking from laughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I just, because... Because why not? I mean, like David's a friend of mine, been a friend of mine for years and years and years. I remember the first time I met David was in 1980, 1984, 1986, maybe? No, 1980, it was 1985. And he, I had been doing cartoons and he, or 1986, that's right. And I've been doing cartoons, and he, he brought me his cassette tape because he's working on radio at that time. And he says, so, Gary, well, well, can you listen to my cassette tape? Tell me what you think about this, uh, this voice demo. And uh, so I listened to it, and I went, man, that's a great demo. You're going to have fun with that. And then we actually started working together, and it was like, holy moly. And uh, I just remember when he first started, 1986, doing doing animation, and it was because uh, we were neighbors. We lived in the same apartment building back then, oh. so we have a long history, us two. And so when he got when he got cast as as Optimus Prime down in the states, I just went, yeah, okay, because he lives down there now, and. Um, I don't, and I've got other things going on. I've sort of moved on a little bit. And uh, it just seems like, I don't know, I, I I can't be bitter about it. I can't be angry about it. So I, you have to laugh. I mean, that's the way the business goes. That's the nature of the business. I mean, how many Batmans have there been? Way too many. Way too many. They have a different Batman every movie. There's, now it's Robert Pattinson. Now is Robert Patton. They say, "Oh, he's the best." And I'm going, "Really? Does he have a body that will fit inside that muscle suit?" 
you know, I just, um, I thought that's, that's that, and they, he, they say he's the best one. Well, I'm going to watch and see. But there have been so many bad, bad, so many Supermans. How many Supermans have there been? You know, when you think about it, how many Jokers? Too many, but I remember Mark Hamill, Heath Ledger, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, Jared Leto. Now he's more. Jared than- Leto. Uh, and uh, what about, uh, uh, what about uh, 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 Jack Nicholson? He played the Joker. I'm not a DC fan. I'm a Marvel fan, so I'm I'm yeah. just listing off the ones I've heard of. Oh well, Jack Nicholson played played uh, the Joker, and the the original Joker was uh, Cesar Romero in the 1960s. And uh, he played it. And uh, Eartha Kitt played the original Catwoman. The Riddler was played by Frank Gorshin. And uh, I remember looking at that back, and Burgess Meredith played the Penguin. That was in the original Batman series. So there were a lot of heavy hitters who, who played uh, Played villains, the, the guest villains on the Batman show. In, in the, that was a na 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 Batman. But uh, then they, they, the Batman got so dark. And um, I'm like I said, I'm not a DC fan, but isn't that what fans like about Batman now? Yeah, they love the darkness of it. It's like Scarecrow now. Mm. Remember that show, Scarecrow? I have never heard of it. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be honest, dude, you gotta watch Scarecrow. You gotta see the movie. With, I'll put uh, that on my list. With uh, what's his face, uh, Lee Brandon Lee. I I will put that on my list because yeah. I just finished watching Hunt, my favorite cartoon, Hunt Take Secrets and Seekers, and I'm gonna be watching Yu Gi Oh Five Ds um, after. Soon afterwards. Ah, have you, seen, have you seen Cowboy Bebop? I'm gonna be honest, no, because the only animes I um I watch are Dragon Ball, well Z and Super. I don't watch. Uh, I I read the original manga, Yu-Gi-Oh, GX, Five Ds, and Arc Five, and sometimes yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. And of course, <gasps> oh, I know. Have you seen Arcane yet? Isn't isn't that the League of Legends show? Arcane? Yeah. No, I don't think so. It's a new show on Netflix. Yeah, it's a uh, League of it's a uh, I think it's or, or League of Legends. I guess it is League of Legends, isn't it? Yeah. That is an amazing show. The animation and the acting is first rate. I'll I'll definitely take a look. Give at- it a look. Just give it a look. You'll like it. I guarantee you'll you'll go. Wow, this is art. Because every frame on it is art. Oh, oh, sorry. Um. Uh, shit. What'd you do? Uh, the pe- sorry, the glass on Ratchet kind of fell off. No. No. Badly ah! wounded. Know. And I use my work bonus to get him. <laughs> oh no, Ratchet. Okay, it's fixed now. Oh, thank God. Uh, Crisis averted. Um, and yeah, eventually Peter's gonna leave, but on, but and but we have had several alternate crimes, and I think fans and I can agree on the definitive list. Which is from worst to best. It's Jake Fushi. I don't think yeah. anybody likes that guy as Optimus Prime. Yeah. Uh, Neil Kaplan, and then David K. You and obviously it's Peter has to be on top. Yeah. Well, Peter was number one. Yeah. Um. Speaking of Peter, I actually met Peter a couple of years ago in Montreal Comic Con, and he signed uh, one of my box figures. Nice. 
I can show it to you if you want. Uh, this was given to me by my uncle um, on Christmas of 2014. And I have never ever heard of this figure until I received it as a gift. Oh, beautiful. So I must stop recording now because um, I do have but because uh, I do have one small uh, personal favor um, yeah. I, I would like from you 